All right, Jake Phelps here, and I'm doing this video to show people everything I've picked up about using the Alaskan Mini Mill. I've been using this thing for quite some time now, and I've gotten pretty good at it. I put out hundreds of board foot a day, and I'm going to show you exactly how it is that I do it. Uh, in the link below, or also whatever, in this playlist, it shows how to make the rails, which is right here, and that's a really vital part to this. But I'm going to show how to put the rails on the tree, how to cut the tree. I mean, this is going to be a very in-depth video about how to mill your own lumber with a chainsaw. All right, you got to have a nice flush cut, and then go ahead and take your measurement. I like to make everything right around 9 foot 3 inches. And the reason I like everything to be around 9 foot 3 inches is for one, when you're stacking them so they dry, everything lines up the same. And also you have a foot and three inches extra for cutting off the ends for where, you know, it does go ahead and split a little bit. And I just mark it like so. And that's where I'm going to buck it. All right. I like to definitely have two chainsaws and you got to have at least that size um, chainsaw for the, for the milling chainsaw. Maybe a little bit smaller just because, I mean, that's barely big enough. And then, you know, a smaller one or whatever for, um, for doing your bucking and also for doing all your other stuff. And you want to be real particular, or at least I like to try to be real particular about how I do my cuts. I want them to be straight because... It helps. I thought I might need that wedge to put underneath my cut just so that I wouldn't have to worry about going into the, I wouldn't get pinched and I wouldn't have to worry about going into the dirt or any of that other hazardous to chain health scenarios. All right, what I do here is I put paint right here and I also put it right here prior to milling and also just to preserve this. And the reason I do that is wood is really funny about the way it dries. It dries in certain directions faster than other directions. And if it dries in the fastest direction, which is right here, way faster than the rest of it, which it does by nature, what will happen is you'll get splits. So that's why you want to put paint or something on here. And this is how I keep my paint. I really hope there aren't any painters watching because um, you know, I just keep this in there like that and water. Just kind of smack it off. And then I've got my paint. It's just regular old, it's old latex paint. That's what it looks like. <laughs> I mean, anything will work. You need to just slap the paint on there. Doesn't gotta be pretty. 
it's just preserving the end so it doesn't dry faster than the rest. And then I do that same thing on that prior to starting the mill also, just so I don't have to come back and do it later. I just like to get it all out of the way now. All right, now for this part. This is really important. Basically what I'm doing here is I want to elevate that end of the log so that when I'm milling, I got gravity working with me. This is really hard work and I want everything to be as easy as possible. You'll see what that's for in a second. I've got this tool right here. It's just like a got a handle. It's nice and mobile. Now I've got it elevated. All right, now you can see I got my guide rails on it. And you want to try to have the flattest part up. So when you put your guide rails on, you don't have to do a whole lot of leveling with other pieces of wood or however you got to level it. And you want to try to make your cuts match rings. Like if you count down like three rings on this side, three rings on that side. You want your cuts to, your measurements to match up like that. But, I mean, if you want to get all technical like that with it, that's fine. I generally, just for this rough lumber, for building rough stuff, I don't worry about all that. <clears throat> Another thing is, with the trees, if you use a tree that is like in a hedgerow or in your yard, it's not going to be the greatest wood. When you try to when you try to dry it, it's just it's not going to work out very well for you because the rings and just the whole entire equilibrium of that tree is not straight because it was in an open area. So you want to try to find something in the woods if you're going to be milling lumber, not to mention who knows what's going to be in that tree. Because, I mean, you're doing all those cuts, the probability of hitting something just skyrockets. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm lag bolting this ladder to this tree and I've got an impact and I have not used this yet this will be the first time I've used it I made it like a month or two ago and I've been sidetracked with other things so this is gonna be the first time I've used it
And here's my lag bolts. I just use these as spacers. I just got three in it. And it actually feels pretty pretty firm. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. Alright, these lag bolts are five inches. And I've got three two washers and I've got three nuts. It's really only this one's just kind of for stability. These two are the only two that are really holding it down. Each time you do it, it's going to be a little bit different. So you want to be careful that when you're cutting your first cut, which is so important, you want to be careful that your chain does not hit the lag bolts. So since these are five inches, and you also want to make sure that the top of your guide rails, that the top, the heads of your, your lag bolts are below the tops of your guide rails. And I'm, I'm good right now. Everything looks good. You want to look at it before you start, before you really get into it. All right. And what I do is for my first cut, this thing has numbers on it. You're not going to be able to see them. But I set it at six inches. The top of this right here and whatever measurement it is right there, that's, that's your measurement for how, for the space between here and here. So I got everything set up. And also, whenever a tree dies, okay, if a tree dies in the spring, the bark's gonna come off it easier, if that's what you want. And if a tree dies in the winter, the bark's gonna be harder to get off. So depending on what kind of application you wanna use your lumber for, if you, want the, if you want to try to preserve the bark or not, those are two good things to, to keep in mind. And also, for ripping lumber, your angles on your teeth, you want less angle, in theory. It just, it just works out better. I don't have a ripping chain, I just have a regular chain that I customized. I just sharpened them with a little less angle. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first cut.
saying it's a little bit more wobbly than I would have liked. I probably should have went ahead and put a put a little um, something down there. And I mean, the more lag bolts, the better. You really can't have too many lag bolts. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. It actually looks really good. I was a little bit worried, but I guess all the wobbling went this way. And down here, since I've noticed what was going on, I kind of lifted up a little bit. I mean, she's perfectly straight. So I'm really happy with that. So you just take your, um, take this apart and then I'll show you in a second, adjusting that and getting into your, um, your actual production of lumber. All right, now as you can see, I took the rails off. I put that right there and that's so the saw does when it goes on top of that, I can just flop it off and put it back. So I don't get a whole bunch of sawdust piled up because that can be an issue. It might sound, might, might sound crazy, but it does. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I wanna lower this because I want, I want my pieces to be two inches thick right now. So all you do is you just look on here. I got it six now. And then you loosen these, lower it to two, and then you tighten it up. That's about as wide as I can do with this um, with this bar. This bar is an 18 inch bar, and what I just cut right here that's a serious piece of lumber. Fourteen inches. Fourteen inches. You can't go too much more than that with the eighteen inch bar. I mean if you try to, I mean you can, but you gotta you gotta take the, the sides down. I've done it before as a pain in the butt. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. This thing is nice. I mean that's a nice piece of lumber. If you bought that at the store, it'd be a lot of money. And um a real simple way to to go ahead and dry this stuff out it takes about a year is what I do is I put I put stickers I make sure the surface is perfectly flat all right here's a little pile that I have curing as you can see I have the stickers these are stickers spaced one foot between each one 
and I got they're like you want them about three quarters of an inch and then there got thicker ones down there and then this wood is one inch thick so it'll take about a year to cure this tree was um it died in the spring so the bark should come off pretty good and then they're just strapped down real tight just add more put more stickers in strap them down again and just keep going up you can also go this way and just have longer stickers and the pieces on the bottom you just have those longer as well but it's not that hard to cure the stuff important thing is that you have your have your paint or something on the ends of them so that everything dries homogeneously